Hello again, everyone. This is Dave Reynolds from the Peoria Journal Star Sports Department, welcoming you to another edition of the Journal Star Podcast. Our guest today, Bradley University head coach for 10 years now, this is Elvis Dominguez. Welcome, Elvis. Dave, great to be with you here. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, you're opening your season at home tonight against Chicago State. It's going to be a crisp evening out there, I'm sure. <laughs> But uh, this begins a, a five-game homestand for you guys. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're expecting tonight, uh, who's pitching, and what you expect out of Chicago State. Well, I tell you what, uh, it's great to be home. We played our first 16 on the road, so it's always nice to come home. And uh, it's going to be a cold one, like you mentioned. But, uh, you know, this time of year, you've been a lot of opening days. It's You never know <laughs> about the weather, especially in central Illinois. But we're uh, we're looking forward to being at home and – uh, to play in front of our fans and on our field for the first time. So I have uh, Mitch Jansen will go tonight. He just pitched last week against uh, UCF, so he's ready to go in his rotation. And, um, you know, he's a kid from Princeville, local kid. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, you know, we should be, be able to play um, at home. And obviously the weather will di dictate a lot. If it doesn't change, I think we'll still on for this evening. And speaking of that start, you're 11 and five mm -hmm. in those 16 uh, road and neutral, mostly road games, but some neutral too. Um, one of the, one of your best starts in recent years. Um, tell us a little bit about the team. And uh, I look, at, I just look at the stats, and I see you're hitting 309 as a team, and uh, that's almost seven runs a game. So that's a good place to start as an offense like that. You know, anytime you can do that, it's just great. And if you told me we would have planned it out that way, but we've had guys that just came out of the gate. Um, from, you know, one through nine, it hasn't been just one guy in particular. There's been several guys, and it's just, you know, that we'll be able to manufacture runs. The key has been uh, our pitching has been very solid, uh, and we play very good defense as well. I mean, the, the one thing about this club, Dave, a lot of people don't understand is how much adversity we've had in the, you know, in the first 16 games. You know, we were supposed to go down and open up in Atlanta in the Atlanta Challenge against Georgia Tech and so on. Well, our flight got canceled because of the fog that we had. So we had to turn around and go out on bus. So we got in about 4 a.m. in the morning, mm. got up the next day, ended up losing that game 3-1, to one, but managed to win the next two against Georgia Tech and Kennesaw. And then the following weekend, the same thing happened. And so we had to bus again and got in about 2.30 in the morning and got up the next day and were able to sweep the weekend against South Dakota State. So with all those things, you know, I, I'm really happy with the way our club has rebounded. Uh, but offensively, we have been ticking just from, from day one. We've been able to put up some runs. But the pitching has really been the key so far. And I look at the RPI this morning. You're at 67, mm -hmm. um, which is ranked third in the Valley between the two ISUs who obviously have, have good teams this year. But uh, that's that's a good place to be at this point. It is. I mean, we, we dropped a couple of places. Uh, we were as high as uh, 31 or 30th in the country. But, you know, it, it is – it is just a testament to the kind of schedule we're playing and, and the kind of wins we're, we're actually having. Um, let's tar start a little bit more with your offense and some of your individual players. Um, uh, so a lot of returnees, a lot of, a lot of your regulars are, are guys you've had back, mm -hmm. and that's always a, a great place to start. Uh, Brendan Doherty. Uh, your leading hitter, he's around 360, I think. Uh, tell me about him. Well, freshman of the year in the Valley. Um, an All-American, so I mean he's he's been just a steady Eddie as they come. Uh, you know we do have a young club, but it's an experienced club because all those mm -hmm. freshmen did play a year ago. Uh, and so with him and Luke Shadid at short, another local uh, kid from Peoria Notre Dame, those guys have just been the catalyst for us this uh, the last two years, and they both have gotten off to great start. But like I, I mentioned earlier, it hasn't been just one guy, um, whether it's you know, Luke Shadid or um, or Doherty, you know, Luke Mangieri on the other end of the infield at first base has been just uh, a great addition and hitting three-hole and two-hole for us, mm -hmm. um, kind of bounce back and forth. But, um, you know, we, we've, been, we've been able to just be consistent. A lot of guys have understood their roles early on. So it's really been a great group to be around. Yeah, you mentioned Mangieri. Uh, he was a preseason Valley pick uh, um, along with uh, Andrew Ivila. I Avelia, Avelia. Yeah. Um, so um, obviously, a couple of good players right there. Right, and Andrew is is really uh, one of those guys that flies under the radar, uh, but he was, you know, like you said, preseason uh, first team All Missouri Valley. 
but he has played right field. He has played left field. He has played third base. He has played second base. He just does everything for us mm -hmm. and hits uh, three hole, which is, uh, you know, a great kind of a Ben be. Zobris type. Huh? Very, very similar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's really been a, a catalyst for us as well. And, uh, also look at uh, some of your other guys in the middle of your order, your power guy, Derek Bangert, mm -hmm. our home run RBI leader last year. How's he doing so far? So far he's doing great. I think he's hitting around 330. Uh, the power numbers aren't there yet, but I think, you know, another year of um, being scouted by other teams and so on is really limited as far as pitch, pitch selection, where last year he was a new guy, didn't know how to attack him. Uh, this year, I think they're being a little bit more careful. But he's got two home runs so far. But he's a guy that we rely on in the you know in the four hole. And you mentioned defense. I love Ant watching Andy Shadid play center field. Boy, he can go get him. He can. <laughs> he, he him and you know he just gives it he gives another element because he covers so much ground out there. And what a great young man. You know he's had so many accolades. He was one of the first Bradley athlete ever uh, in the history to be selected for the leadership. Uh, award up in Washington, D.C. So he has so many other attributes that he brings as far as leadership is concerned to our club that really uh, sets him apart. And you've got a freshman catcher who's off to a nice start, Keaton Rice. Uh, right right off the bat, he's in the lineup. Well, I'll tell you what. he uh, I saw him, and I knew he had a, a chance when we recruited him. And last summer, instead of just playing with his regular team, uh, he ended up playing in a collegiate summer league. And I think that pretty much accelerated his progress and he has come in and has been uh, a great you know not only defensively but offensively which has been a, a surprise this early but he's really done a great great job of handling the staff as well he's really matured and you look at the power numbers I look at um, Ian Christian hasn't played a lot but three homers <laughs> and 17 at bats it's hard to beat <laughs> I tell you what it, it was it's, you, you know this is my 31st year being involved in, uh, in this game at the division one level Dave, I've never seen anything like it. He he took three swings and hit three home runs <laughs> on th on four pitches, and wow. I, and I've it, it was just one of those things that you just you don't draw it up. But he's a kid that's been hurt. Uh, you know, he was our everyday starting catcher a year ago. Um, has had hip surgery, so he's just basically coming back. I mean, trying to work him in a lineup little by little. Uh, probably going to DH him tonight just to try to give him a little bit more bats until he gets clearance to go behind the plate. But, yes, it was uh, it was fun to watch there for a while. And he goes back to your NCAA team. Wasn't he a freshman on that team? He hit cleanup. Yeah. He was our four-hole hitter um, as a freshman. He was a DH because we had uh, Drew Carlisle behind the plate at the time. And then uh, Elliot Ashbeck, who's now with the Padres, uh, was our other pitcher DH. So whenever Elliot pitched, he became our DH kid. So, yes, he's mm -hmm. been he's been around for, for a while. Not not many of that class are still around because of uh, pro ball and things like that. Yeah, and, and just for reference, uh, 2015, right, when Correct. Bradley went to the NCAA tournament and uh, played down on Louisville at the regional, and uh, what a great experience for the program. Well, it was it was great for the university. I mean, first time since 1968 that we had gotten, you know, beyond uh, the conference and into the NCAAs, and our first win since 1956. So... Uh, it is. It was a benchmark, and that's something we keep trying to reach back for every single year. Yeah, we haven't talked pitching yet. I know uh, you mentioned that you're off to a solid start there. Um, Cole Cook back in the rotation uh, uh, from Washington, Illinois. Um, tell us about how he's done so far, and then the rest of the rotation. Well, he's 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 pitched very very well. His numbers, you know, his record is I believe two and two right now. Um, but he's, he's pitched very well. I mean, to be a Friday night guy, you're going up against everybody's number one on the other end as well. So uh, he has pitched well. Uh, we, have, we haven't done a couple things for him. Uh, haven't given him as much run support, even though we're averaging seven runs. But it's, uh, he's, he's done well in him and, um, you know, Sam Lund, who's a junior college kid that we got. He's 3-0 and for us. Um, you know, and, and the second starter is we kind of mixed and matched. We have Ben Olson, who has been um, he's been injured the last year or so, so we're still trying to soften him back into the rotation as well. But I feel very confident that if we get Ben back, you know, to have Cole Cook, Sam Lund, and Ben Olson in that rotation, it'll give us um, a great three three starters for a weekend series. And then um, the bullpen is Bobby Johnson shaping up as your closer. <laughs> <laughs> we well, at first we were just trying to feel some guys out because of the injuries, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, he has seemed to have accepted that role and taken it over. He reminds me a lot of a Matt Dennis, um, 
who was came in as a as a as a closer for two years, and then we put him mm-hmm. into the starting rotation. Who's now with the Colorado Rockies? He, uh, you know, he has three pitches. He throws for strikes. He's a 92, 95 guy, uh, miles per hour. So I mean, he's he's got a, he's got all the tools to be a great starter. I just right now our bullpen has really been the key for us. Our starters have gotten four or five innings, and then we turn it over to the bullpen. Him and um, Brian Schremer, um, you know, and, and a freshman that we have, which we're really, really high on, Brooks Goswine, uh, left-hander out of Barrington, who is uh, – he's just been – you know, he hasn't pitched as a freshman at all. So he's one and one for us, but has really come in in key situations and gotten, uh, gotten some key outs for us. Yeah, and speaking of those late innings, uh, back to the offense, uh, I was checking your stats, seventh, eighth, the ninth inning, you guys are – crushing the ball <laughs> I don't I don't know what that means at this point but, well, we, uh, we got we gotten into the into their bullpen a little bit yeah. and obviously that's that's where the numbers kind of uh and that's why I think we, we've been successful Dave early on is the fact that our bullpen has been you know steady and if you ask any manager any coach at any level they always worry about the bullpen because the starter you never know how he's going to do uh, but if you have a solid bullpen then you can go ahead and and you know kind of work some things out and ours has been very very solid in some cases, other teams haven't. So this been... this pitching staff does it compare favorably to some good pitching staffs you've had in recent years? I, I think it has a potential. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, one one guy we haven't talked about is Alan Beer, mm-hmm. who has who was also on that 2015 team, mm-hmm. uh, and he's just now starting to come back. Um, so, you know, I think once we get all the pieces, it's always nice to have everything on paper. But uh, once we get everybody back, I, I feel very confident about it. It kind of gives us a boost with with our uh, with our depth. And, and what, guys in rows. What was Allen's injury? Allen's just been having just, you know, regular pitching woes. You know, sometimes his shoulder, sometimes his elbow, sometimes mm-hmm. his back. So it hasn't been a consistent area, but it's – we're trying to work it out, and, you know, you're only as good as your pitching. Oh, at, at any level. <laughs> at any level. Ask the guys who are making the right. money in the big leagues, they'll tell you. And once he comes back and is healthy, what do you anticipate? I imagine you're probably easing back in in, in the bullpen. In the bullpen, yeah. And then do you anticipate him being in the rotation at some point? Yeah, I think it's going to be a matter of whether how, how fast Ben comes back, Ben Olsen comes back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to put him in the end because that gives us another closer opportunity. When that's that's the role that he's had uh, for several years. So I mm-hmm. think I think I'll start him off there and then kind of bring him back little by little into the starting right. rotation. And we talked a little bit about the Valley. Um, is it uh, – how, how does it look overall this year? As strong as past years? Or? Oh, I think we're currently sixth or seventh in the, in the country, which mm-hmm. is, you know, the northern, northernmost school. So um, it's just a very tough conference. And it's really, mm-hmm. you know, I selfish reasons, it's a baseball conference. You know, we're a team – we're a conference that every year it's two to three teams that get to the NCAA, mm-hmm. and we only have eight teams that play. So uh, somebody asked me early on in another interview, you know, if Wichita was still here, five of the eight teams would have been top 40 teams ranked. Uh, you could throw Creighton in there too. And if, well, if you threw Creighton in there, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would have been the same. But yeah. with eight teams and five of them in the top 40, mm-hmm. I think it says a lot about, mm-hmm. you know, the coaches and the players and the talent that comes in uh, into the Missouri Valley. And we mentioned Illinois State and Indiana State uh, are ahead of you right now in the in the RPI. What other teams uh, do you think might contend this season? Oh, Dallas Baptist, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they're always they're always solid, they're always loaded, uh, and Missouri State. So those mm-hmm. those five I think can vie for the mm-hmm. for the top of the valley, and any any one of us can win it. Um, and I noticed. Looking at your roster, you've got Joe Kelch as a volunteer coach. How about coach. that, so huh? Joe, Joe's back in town. <laughs> Joe's back in town. You know, Joe is a kid that I really liked out of high school because really fit into our system, mm-hmm. try to recruit him. Um, he ended up going to Illinois State, and here we are a couple years later, and he's been a tremendous addition. Uh, he actually was an assistant last year for one of my uh, former assistants, Sean Lyons. At SIUE, At right. SIUE. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, when this opportunity opened up, um, Sean called me up and says, "You really need to look at this kid. He's, you know, he's years beyond um, experience. I mean, he's just he's a young guy, but really understands the game real well, and it's really been a great teacher and a great uh, asset to our staff." Yeah, and tell me about the rest of your staff. Pretty you guys that have been here for a while, for the most part. Uh, yeah, Larry Scully is our, our pitching guy, and uh, handles uh, a lot of the recruiting. He is um, was fourth fourth year, five year now with me. Fourth year, yeah. fourth year with me. It all goes <laughs> goes by fast, 
but uh, you know he does a great job with with our with our staff. Um, it really has a knack for teaching, and that's really the the big key. Uh, and, you know he's he's worked with obviously we had three arms um, that have gone on and played, and since he's been here, and Elliot Ashbeck, Cameron Regner, uh, and uh, Matt Dennis. So I mean as far as development, uh, he's 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 very very good. Kyle Truen, I brought him back. He was our volunteer. Uh, for two years uh, early on, and when Sean left to become the head coach at SIUE, uh, it just was an easy transition. He knows our system. He knows exactly what I'm looking for, um, and he's a, a great young man and, again, an, another great teacher. So uh, I think we all complement each other. We it's, it's a great staff to be around. And um, three former Braves, uh, Mike Talkman, uh, um, Rob Scahill, and Jason Lovell-Bijan, Hey, you may, you pronounced it right, David. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, yeah, I just to be I honest, I still can't you, spell it after four years of well, trying. Well, I'm, I'm going to let you know. I, I just call his nickname is Soup, just because <laughs> there's a lot of vowels and yeah. cases, so I just call him Soup. But yeah, yeah Leb is, uh, you know, they're all three, and two of them, you know, uh, uh, had time in the big leagues last year, and uh, I think Mike is he's having a tremendous spring training. So is Rob. Um, and Jason is is just on the brink of, of being of being there as well. So it'd be great to have three, you know, since 2009. Excuse me, since 2009 to have three former players that mm -hmm. can actually break at the major league level is it'll say something about our program. Yeah, and Scale looks like he's uh, he's pitching well this spring and could be a factor in that White Sox bullpen. I sure hope so. Yeah. I mean, he's close enough, and I can always hit him up for tickets. So, I mean, <laughs> it's one of those deals. But, uh, yeah, him and uh, him and Michael, I think, are the two that are in the forefront right mm -hmm. now. And, you know, Mike was on the roster, the playoff roster with the Rockies last year. So um, I was hoping they wouldn't sign Cargo for another year, and that would give Mike the opportunity. But, yeah. you know, that's way above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> and I can remember the year, his senior year with you guys, he hit, he hit over 400, right? He's 425. He yeah. led the country in hitting. Yeah. For first team consensus All American. Um, you know, he, he's, he's a guy that, if you look at him, he doesn't run well, uh, doesn't throw well, uh, and doesn't hit or hit for power. But he's going to play. You know, yeah. he's, he's, he's going to play. Yeah. He, so he just made himself, you know, when you say a prototypical baseball player, he's a guy that spent a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, in the cages and working on his craft. And here he is. I mean, he's never hit below 300 at any level he's played at. Uh, in Pro Bowl, and last year I believe hit like 16 home runs. So his power starting to finally come out, uh, or with him. That's always the last thing to show up. But yeah, he's well on his way. But he's a true baseball player. Mm -hmm. he's, he just does everything right. And now he's playing all three outfield positions. Here I told you he couldn't run a little bit, mm -hmm. but now they have him playing right, center, and left mm -hmm. at the big league level to give some of those guys a day off. So yeah, um, yeah, he does everything right. He's a, he's a great kid. How does a kid like that? Um, well, obviously, as you described, me, not maybe a great athlete um, and uh, certainly not a five-tool guy. Or, no. you may, I mean, but here he is at the, you know, knocking on the, on the door at the big leagues. I mean, probably will play some mm -hmm. at the big leagues level this year. And what a great park to hit in, by the oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> Power but, numbers are going to go up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, – he, aside from desire and stick to itiveness and all those intangibles, what makes him where he is today? You know, he he's a guy that he was my actually my first recruiting class, my my first recruit, uh, him and Levy, um, that I brought here. But the one thing is, Mike is so mentally tough, and he's always learning, and he's always uh, trying to improve. But he just worked. He just works and works and works and works. Mm -hmm. When others were, were not around, he was still hitting. I mean, he wore me out for, for many, many hours a day, still mm -hmm. throwing BP and so on. So mm -hmm. he he has he just has a knack for not being satisfied ever. He could go three for three and still go back in the cage. Um, so he's he's just he's that guy that you know is just going to get the most out of his ability and try to beat you in any way that he can. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And um, one other th topic I wanted to touch on, um, just in terms of uh, college baseball overall, um, you know, the the college basketball, NBA thing with uh, trying to figure out the one and done. And, mm. you know, there's a lot of talk about um, whether that should be changed to stay in college two years or eliminate it altogether. Um, lots of lots of opinions there, but to – 
college baseball seems to have gotten it right <laughs> from the beginning, in my opinion. Um, once you sign with the college team, you're there for, for three years, and then you can come out for the draft. Um, and I don't know when that rule went into effect, but long ago. Um, how do you feel that rule has played out? Do you think it's a good rule? Do you think it needs to be tweaked? And uh, how do you feel just offhand about the basketball situation? Oh, well, <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, I don't think, and I, like I said, after 31 years, my 31st one out now, I don't think there's an 18-year-old kid that's out there that can go ahead and get into professional athletes or for professional athletics and be ready physically, but more importantly, mentally mm-hmm. and maturity wise and so on. I think they need time to develop. Uh, I do. And if you look at the way baseball has transpired here the last probably 10, 15 years, you see a lot more college guys being taken and taken early, mm-hmm. uh, unless you're a special talent, you know, a pitcher or something like that. But a lot more college guys are in the big leagues now because they're ready. Mm-hmm. They go out and they are, you know, they're more advanced from all aspects of it mm-hmm. and are able to reach that level uh, a, a lot quicker. So for me, you know, three years is, 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 is a great, I don't know who came up with it, but it's, it's been that way since I was uh, in school um, for as long as I can remember, but they need the time to mature, to grow physically and mentally um, and, and be able to adapt to another lifestyle. So I, I think it's a blessing. I think that's why it's been so successful uh, for us. Um, you know, this one and done, I, 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 I really, I don't even want to talk about it because it's more of Dave, those kids are not ready. You can't ask an 18 year old kid or, a, you know, 19 year old kid when the first year in college to go up against a LeBron James mm-hmm. and be able to physically handle it. Um, so, but they have those developmental leagues, I think is where they put a lot of those guys in as well, where our guys don't have that luxury. You got to play right now. Mm-hmm. And you either sink or swim right off the bat. So I think the more experience they get, the better it is. And college baseball is a, is a great venue to, to do that in. And baseball as a game, I think it's more difficult um, to reach that level, to reach that major league uh, level. I mean, even even top prospects that have played in the minors and get to the major leagues a lot of times will struggle the first year or two. Um, Basketball, not so much. I mean, you, I mean, you mentioned LeBron. He's he's an example. Kobe right. Bryant. Those they were seventeen, eighteen year old kids that went straight to the NBA. Now, now there are obviously exceptions, but but uh, you know there are quite a few one and dones that have done okay in, in the NBA too. And don't know that that could happen in, in Major League Baseball. No, no. I mean, you well. I mean, we sat here when uh, you know Jim Tomey was going in the Hall of Fame and had a conversation and. Um, you know, when you look back at all the years of baseball and only 18,000 players have ever played in the big leagues mm-hmm. in the history, mm-hmm. that tells you how tough and difficult it is. So it's not as easy as, as one might think. It's, um, it takes a lot of hours and a lot of practice, and, uh, and even then it's a game of failure. You know, you, you, if you're successful 30% of the time, you're, mm-hmm. you're probably going to be a superstar. Mm-hmm. So it, it does take time and a lot, of, uh, a lot of hard work. But, you know, it's, it's – uh, you're right. The two guys that you mentioned, and Kobe and, and LeBron, you know, those guys are special talent. So mm-hmm. they can't say it can't happen. But we've never, I mean, not that I'm aware of. I think there's only been like two guys that have ever gone from high school into the big leagues, uh, and none of them ever lasted, and none of them were ever mm-hmm. able to to have any sustainability at mm-hmm. all. And just uh, wrapping up today, we wanted to get back to uh, Bradley baseball uh, at uh, Dozier Park is. Uh, this is the first day of spring, so uh, <laughs> it must be time for baseball. Um, and you do open tonight against uh, Chicago State. And at the at the end of that five game uh, homestand, University of Illinois is coming to town. So tell us about uh, that program and that game. Should be a good one. That should be a good one. You know, we've tried to get uh, with Dan Hartlib over there, their head coach. We used to play Itchy when I was at the, my previous institution quite a bit. And when we got here, we're too close not to be able to make. To play a home and home, so we finally got that on the schedule uh, for the next couple of years, and um, they come here early. Last year we went there early, and they came in here late. So uh, we kind of switched it around this year, and they'll be here Tuesday. And then I also have the University of Iowa coming in the following week. Uh, so it, it'll be uh, it's very challenging, you know. I mean, we try to get as many games as we possibly can, but 
uh, it'll be uh, they have a great program. They're off to another good start, and I think it'll be fun to watch, and I think very competitive. Well, that concludes today's podcast. Our guest, Elvis Dominguez, head coach, Bradley University. Thank you for coming. Dave, thanks so much for having me. I really enjoy our time. And if you want to subscribe to the Journal Star, call 309-686-3161. I think I got that number right. (laughs) Our thanks to Adam Garrick, our engineer today. And uh, we are at the end of this podcast. Thanks and so long for now. And play ball. Play ball. (laughs)